Today we're going to be talking about Game Driver Smart Agents. The idea here is that there are going to be times in our gameplay testing where we need to account for unscripted activities where an event might occur we can't predict in advance when it's going to happen and we don't want to artificially trigger that event because then we're not actually testing the gameplay we're just triggering the event which is more akin to unit testing so in this example we have a very simple game which is going to pop up dialogues randomly at different points in the screen now this could be something like an offer for free to play or type of game where users purchase items through an online store and the item offer might appear at random uh, points throughout gameplay. So imagine this pop-up appears, I've got something else going on, so I don't know when this pop-up is going to appear, but I need to somehow handle it. In this case, we're just going to be clicking on random pop-ups that appear at different points throughout our gameplay. So new with GameDriver 2023.10, we've introduced a feature that allows you to define this behavior where we're going to be checking for the, the pop-up and then handle that in some way. And we're going to upload that functionality to the game itself and then run it on a scheduled interval. And this is what we call the smart agent. And so this is broken into two parts. We're gonna be registering a listener, which is going to check for the event on the agent side. And that agent is going to execute a small Lua script, which we're showing here. And the api.schedule script command accepts that Lua script. And so in the Lua script, we have the local object is set to a resolve object function, which is the command on the agent side, which is looking for this pop-up clone. And we could use any age path here. So it could be the name, it could be an element or property value of that object that's going to help us identify when this object appears on the screen or in the, the scene. So you can see here from the, the command execution, we have the script, which is written in, in plain text. And then we have the execution mode, which is set to once or every X number of frames. And then we have the callback below where we wait for this script signal. And when the notification comes back from the test, that it's true, we're going to write on a console command that we found a pop-up, and then we're going to set pop-up equals true. Now, the next part of this test is just for uh, demonstration purposes. We could put all of our logic into this callback handler here. Instead of saying console message, we could say run the command or, or perform the action to click on the button that we want to deal with here. But in this case, we're gonna run through this 10 times. So think of these things as We've got the script that is uploaded via the, the scheduler. We've got the callback that's waiting for the signal from the script. And then we're performing our action there. And it doesn't have to be separated as it is here, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Another interesting note here is that instead of looking for the specific button that we have up here, which is this pop-up clone, we're actually gonna be looking for any object in the scene that contains a UI button with an interactable property attached to that. So why don't we go ahead and run this, and then you can see how this behaves when we're uh, running this test in a real environment. So I hit play. It's going to set the editor in play mode, and we'll see the first pop-up. Now you can see these pop-ups are occurring randomly in different parts of the screen, and then you can see our simulated mouse cursor move to that close button and click on that very quickly. We put in some delays here so that it doesn't fly by too quickly. And there you have it. We were able to upload functionality to our project that allows us to monitor for the pop-ups that could occur at any time in our test and resolve those objects dynamically, close the pop-up as they occurred, and you can see how this might be useful for something more complicated, say a farming simulator where you're waiting for certain objects to become available for harvesting. It could be, oops, my character died. Now I need to hit the reset button. Or it could be waiting for certain boss events to occur during a fight so that when those events do occur and assuming that there's some level of intelligence in the behaviors of those characters, 
you're dynamically responding to those behaviors. And you can register multiple scripts to run in the background during the course of your test. That way you're checking for multiple dynamic scenarios to occur and taking action against them. And so this is a very powerful feature that we're happy to bring to the testing community. And we look forward to hearing your feedback. Thank you very much.